Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on The Flash Season 3. Now, this is going to be my review for Episode 6 of The Flash Season 3, otherwise entitled Shade. But before we get into anything, obviously, spoiler alert, big spoiler alert definitely for this episode, so if you haven't watched it, you uh, might not want to watch this video yet until you've watched the episode. So this episode obviously focused on problems that Wally, due to Barry's adventures in Flashpoint, now faced. Plus, we had more Killer Frost build-up, and an interesting villain of the week, even though he might have been a bit, sort of, useless anyway. So a decent amount went down in this episode, especially towards the end. Now, I love that opening with Wally doing the voiceover thing, just like Barry does, but obviously as Kid Flash. So we got a little taste of what it would be like if Wally was, like, the title character of this show. But god, it was hilarious seeing H.R. Wells' reaction to finding out that his Earth-1 counterpart, obviously Wellsabard, if you want to call him that, is seen as quite the bad person on Earth-1. A murderer, if you will. It was very interesting when Barry explained the whole Flashpoint lives of Wally and Iris, how they were like a team fighting crime, and that being the reason behind Wally's dream, is while Wally thought it was because he was zapped by the Dark Matter uh, last season, that he was just getting premonitions of what was to come. Obviously, it added fuel to the fire with the whole, like, what, how Wally sees Barry as, like, the favourite kid, but it also highlighted some darkness within Wally. The villain for this episode was a villain known as Shade, or The Shade, depending on who you talk to. Not exactly like from the comics, it was a bit underwhelming, but pretty similar, I guess, in regards to his abilities. I guess the coolest bit of the episode with him was the way he killed that businessman, at the, like his introduction, it was pretty damn brutal when he like snaps his neck. That little gadget of H.R. Wells was pretty cool, like that's a plus of multiverse travel, I guess, she's like, there's different pieces of tech from different Earths. Caitlin's reveal of her metahuman abilities was pretty sick, but that vibe that Cisco had was pretty damn cool as well. I'm pretty sure that scene or something pretty similar happens next week with Vibe and the Flash taking on Killer Frost. It might not be that exact scene, but it's something similar. I'm not surprised Cisco lied to Caitlin, as it may have driven Caitlin to that dark place even faster, even though he revealed it to her later on. Now, H.R. Wells is honestly just hilarious in this show. I'm loving the new Harrison Wells of this season. Even subtle things like Earth-19's currency differences, how, what was it, like a triangle or something? I guess at least you were guaranteed a good laugh when HR is on screen. I guess that's a good thing. That little talk from Iris was very important as she's like discussing her role in Team Flash. As Iris is like little to like non-existent contributions to Team Flash at some times have been a common complaint from Iris West fans like since basically the introduction of the show. So it's actually good that the show acknowledged it and hopefully improve it in episodes or you know throughout this season at least. The, like, mental breakdown of Wally was done really well in this episode, and it was pretty interesting that Shade, like, attacked that, like, cinema thing, or not cinema, like, we call it, like, Moonlight Cinema in Australia, where you watch, like, a movie out in the open under the moonlight, anyway, something like that. And at the same time, Wally was lured in by Alchemy, so will Alchemy do this throughout the season, I guess? I don't know how long Alchemy is going to be in this season, if he's going to be a season-long villain, working alongside someone that we get introduced to later on. Or if he's like a brother blood from Arrow Season 2, where he's in the majority of the season, but he's not there right at the end. They got the Caitlyn revealing her secret story spot on, I think, in this episode. Even though Cisco really, like, forced her hand in regards to doing it. On some other shows, they would stretch that story out for, like, five or six episodes, and they get really, really dragging on, and you'd just be like, oh, well, like, I sort of just lost care in it. So sometimes the faster you get it over with, it is generally for the better. Now, did anyone raise an eyebrow when it was revealed that Julian didn't come into the work the same day that Alchemy is going around terrorizing Wally? I mean, he wasn't even answering his phone. I don't think his girlfriend's going to be, or this supposed girlfriend that he had, even though that's probably a lie as well, was keeping him away from his phone. Obviously, I'm hinting that Julian is Dr. Alchemy, which is basically what 99.9% .9 of the population that watches Flash thinks, I'm pretty sure. But holy crap, I think you guys know what I'm talking about right now. That end scene with basically Wally, Barry, Joe, and that SWAT team going into Alchemy's lair, thinking, okay, it's going to be easy, one dude, he's got some powers, but yeah, we should be able to take him down pretty easy. No, a certain freaking speedster known as Savitar decides to come in and absolutely 
slaughter everyone. We thought that scene last season with Zoom, you know, when he, like, powers up and just runs around that cafe and just, like, breaks everyone's necks, if that was insane? What about Savitar lifting people up in the air and no one can see him? And even when he grabs Barry by the neck, Barry's still the only one that can see him. Like, you see the angle. It's just Barry floating up in the air. So Joe wasn't able to see Savitar, even when he's standing still. So his look is interesting. I had a quick look on Twitter before I made this video. Everyone's calling him like a love child of like Megatron from Transformers. I understand that. I don't think Savitar is going to have like an unmasking. He's just going to be known as Savitar. And I don't know how often we're going to see him popping up. Like I think over the next couple of episodes, he'll pop up every now and then. But I think they might leave him and not overdo him in this season. Because he is a completely CGI character. That's the one important thing to remember. Like, they do mocap, like, they have a dude in a suit, but then, like, he's, everything there is done on a computer. But obviously, he calls himself the God of, was it God of Speed? I'm pretty sure he calls him God of Speed, even though he's, like, the, the Savitar is known as the Hindu God of Motion. I think he calls himself the God of Speed. So, that whole scene was just absolutely insane, and obviously, I'm not forgetting it. Wally touches Dr. Alchemy's Philosopher's Stone, even though they haven't called it the Philosopher's Stone yet, I don't think. He touches it, and he goes into this, basically, like almost like a tower. It was weird, and I'm not sure if that's going to be how he transforms into a husk. Don't hate me that I'm not translating it as well as you may be uh, translating it, but, like, the color of it was weird. Like, I thought when it first happened that he was turning into, like, the Daniel West reverse flash from the New 52 comics, because it had that color, so he might still come out of it like that, but at the moment, I think we're just going to have to wait and see, but He's gone into some sort of like hibernation, if you want to call it that. It might be like how they get into those husks. You know, how like the rival had a husk and that's how they found him and they did the DNA test. Or if this is something completely different. But I'm excited to find out and uh, wow, that whole end scene just blew my mind. But overall, I thought this was a really good episode. The only major negative, I think, was Shade. Like, it was a bit wasted. Like, he popped up twice and I just think, yeah, it just it was a bit wasted. Like, they could have done some cool stuff with him, but he was just there to really, you know, push that Wally West storyline along. You know, how he's a, he was a distraction, if you know what I mean. But that's really the only negative I have. I think they set up the Killer Frost stuff really well. That last scene is just massive setup in itself. And I cannot wait to see how next episode starts, because next episode is going to continue right from where we just left off. But thanks for watching, guys. Leave your opinions in the comment section below. Was your mind blown as much as I was? I know some people weren't happy about the Savitar's look, but they need to do something different. Like, if it was just another dude in a mask, everyone would be like, oh, they're just doing the same thing over and over again. It's boring. But that's, I guess you can't win. People are going to complain. People aren't going to complain. You can't really win in regards to 100% of people enjoying what you're doing. But yeah, leave what you thought in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe. If you are new, I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.